Hi students, Professor Nugent here. In this video, we're going to derive OLS estimates. Our goal is to estimate theta naught and theta 1 using a random sample of observations on x and y for observations i equals 1 through n. We can rewrite equation 1, our simple regression model, for observations i equals 1 through n. That is, yi equals theta naught plus theta 1 times xi plus ui. Okay, now what does this represent if we are thinking about our relationship between wage and education? then we may have several observations, like you see here on the board, where we have an observation for wage, we have an observation for education, and the best fit line might look something like this. So the intercept, beta naught, is represented by the value of wage when education is zero. Kind of nonsensical, but that is what beta naught represents. Beta one is the slope of this line. Yi is the level uh, the level of wage for a level of, given level of education, and ui is the error or the distance between the regression, regression line and the observation. Okay, so let's derive these estimates using that sample of data. We're going to start with two population moments. We're going to then replace those population moments with their sample counterparts and choose the values for those parameters that solve those equations. So the population moments that we're going to use are equations five and six from the last video. We have that the expected value of u is equal to zero. And this is equation five from the last video. Equation six from the last video implies that the covariance between u and x, which is expected value of u times x, is equal to zero. All right, so we're going to use these two population moments and solve for the parameters uh, choose the parameters that solve these equations. Now we're using a sample of data to come up with these estimates. So we need to replace these with the population moments. So we need to replace these population moments with their sample counterparts. So let's replace these population moments with their sample counterparts. Their sample counterparts are given by the following. We have one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of y i minus beta naught hat minus beta one hat times x i times that equals zero. Observe that this equation equals u, right? Yi minus most of the right-hand side of the regression function. The only thing left on the right-hand side of the regression function is then ui. So this is the sample counterpart for the first moment. The sample counterpart for the second moment is one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of xi times yi minus beta naught hat minus beta one hat times xi that equals zero. And now notice that we have put hats on top of our parameters, beta naught and beta one, which represents that we're going to come up with estimates, sample estimates of these population parameters. Okay. Observe that the first line, the first line can be rewritten this way. We can rewrite this as follows. Y bar is equal to beta naught hat plus beta one hat times x bar. Because one over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n times yi, that's y bar, or the average of y. Same for xi, you get x bar. So if we write this as, a fun as in terms of beta naught, then we get that beta naught hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat times x bar. And now we have an equation that solves for beta naught hat. Okay, let's call this equation 9. Now we can take this equation and plug this back into the sample counterpart above. So let's plug equation nine into this equation. For reference, I'm going to leave this one here. And we have that one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of xi times yi minus, and then let's put in parentheses just to make this one clear. We have y bar minus beta 1 hat times x bar, finish the rest of this, minus beta 1 hat times xi, and close the parentheses, and that equals 0. Good. Now, let's rearrange this. This is now equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi, open bracket. Now, I'm going to write yi minus y bar plus beta 1 hat times x bar minus x i, close bracket, equals zero. 
So I just collected terms, right? I collected these two terms, brought them down, and then I collected these two terms, brought out the beta one hat, brought them down. The next thing to do is we're going to put this term on one side and this term on the other side. Okay? So when we do that, we get that the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi minus y bar equals beta 1 hat times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi, right? Because we have xi times this term, beta 1 hat comes out because it's not part of the summation. And then we flip these because they are being brought to the other side. So we're subtracting this term, bringing it to the other side. So it's sort of like multiplying this time to negative sign. So you have xi minus x bar. Observe that the 1 over n has dropped off because you'll be multiplying 1 over n by both sides. And so it makes no difference in the solution for beta 1 hat. Now, because of some the importance in the characteristics of summation, the, the summation notation, we can rewrite this, these two terms, as follows. The sum from i equals 1 to n as xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar. That equals beta 1 hat times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. And if this step looks unfamiliar to you, please take a look at um, the appendix in the back of Woodridge, and you'll see how we get from this to this step. And finally, let's isolate the beta 1 hat. We get that beta 1 hat is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar all over the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. And if you take a look at this expression, let's call this equation 10. Take a look at equation 10. You see that beta 1 hat, so the estimate of the population parameter using sample data is just the covariance between x and y divided by the variance of x. Okay, and this only works if the variance is positive. Only works if the variance is positive. Otherwise, it'd be dividing by a zero, right? So the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared must be positive. Otherwise, you're dividing by a zero, and you would not have an identification of the beta 1 hat. Let's see what that would look like on a plot. What does that mean if the variance of x is 0? Well, folks, that means that the x's are all the same value. So you have different values of y, but all the same value of x. There's no variation in x to identify a regression line. All right. So using our fitted value, our estimates of beta naught and beta 1, we can come up with the fitted values of the dependent variables. So we have yi hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times xi. So the predicted or fitted value of the dependent variable is equal to the the estimated intercept plus the estimated slope times the value of the independent variable. An example might be wage hat is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 hat times education i. Wage i, education i. So the predicted wage of individual i is equal to beta naught plus beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times the level of education of individual i. Okay, let's look at the OLS residual. ui hat is equal to yi minus yi hat, which is equal to yi minus beta naught minus beta 1 hat times xi. This is different, this OLS residual is different from the error term because it is predicted. All right, we don't observe the error term. Now we can solve for beta naught and beta 1 by minimizing the sum of squared residuals. So we have RSS, sum of squared residuals. Let's see what that looks like. Minimizing the sum of squared residuals. So we're minimizing how far the regression line is from all of the observations. And that gives us the best fit line. So the sum of squared residuals is given by i equals 1, the sum from i equals 1 to n of ui squared, which is sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat times xi squared. And the objective function for solving for beta naught and beta 1 hat is the following. We min over beta naught and beta 1 hat. 
Rather, let's use some dummies, b0 and d1 over the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus b0 minus b1 times xi squared. So we're minimizing with respect to these two terms, b0 and b1, and the solution for b0 and b1 are going to give us beta naught hat, beta 1 hat. The first order conditions for this problem, this minimization problem, are negative 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi minus beta naught minus beta 1 times xi that equals 0, and negative 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat times xi, and that equals 0. And observe that these two equations are the sample counterparts to the population moments that we started with to derive the OLS estimates. Now, the first order conditions are necessary but not sufficient conditions. If the second order conditions are positive, then we actually have a minimum. We can show this algebraically, too, by adding and subtracting beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times xi from the objective function. Let's prove this. We're going to add and subtract beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times xi so that we have this new objective function q. We're minimizing with respect to b0 and b1, and that is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n in brackets yi minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat times xi plus beta naught hat minus b naught plus beta 1 hat minus b1 times xi squared. This is our new objective function. All right, so let's simplify this thing. Observe that what we have here, yi minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat times xi, that's ui. So let's rewrite this. This is the sum from i equals 1 to n of ui minus, oh, it's a plus, we're plus, beta hat, beta naught hat minus b naught plus beta 1 hat minus d1 times xi squared. So the next thing to do is to factor this out. So you have the sum from i equals 1 to n of ui squared plus n times beta naught hat minus b0 squared plus beta 1 hat minus b1 times and that squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared. And we have one more term plus 2 times beta naught hat minus b naught times beta 1 hat minus b1 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. So factoring this out, we get this long equation. And we can, what we can do is summarize this in two terms. OK? We can summarize this two terms in two terms as follows, the sum from i equals 1 to n ui squared plus sum from i equals 1 to n of beta naught hat minus b naught plus beta 1 hat minus b1 times xi squared. Now, observe that the first term does not depend on b0 or b1, so if we minimize this term with respect to b0 or b1, this term is going to fall out, it doesn't matter. Next, observe that the second term is its smallest. when b0 equals beta naught hat and b1 equals beta 1 hat, because then this term is equal to 0. So this tells us that the solution that b naught equals beta naught hat and b1 equals beta 1 hat is the minimum. OK, so all this, all this work to get to the sample regression function, which is the sample counterpart to the population regression function, Sample regression function. And the sample regression function is y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times x. Right? This is the sample regression function, the counterpart to the population regression function.